Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of Javier in the Air. This is Season 3, Episode 7, or 83 episodes so far that I've been able to do. Let me adjust my lighting here. So 83 episodes that I've that I've gotten out. This is episode 83, so I really appreciate y'all hanging in there. Uh, I hope to make it to at least 100, uh, and we'll see we'll see if I can do it. I think I can, so I'm hoping everybody will hang in there. So uh, today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, my wine barrel project that's almost complete, it's 98% done. Um, the Olympics, what's left, plus a couple of. Uh, uh, conversations around that and then we'll have some alcohol today uh, last week we did a little Kahlua so I'm trying to make something di I'm trying to do another alcohol today so that we then have beer the following week so I can start trying to mix it up like that I don't know if I'll be able to because I have way more beer and way more options of differences of beer than I do um, everything else so uh, and just to prove to my mother I'm not an alcoholic uh, I don't have that much other alcohol here ma so it's mostly beer so which I don't know if that's gonna satisfy her or not but it doesn't matter here we go so okay so uh, the wine barrel project um, I showed it in episode 2 I believe uh, brother Rob was nice enough when he was out in Fredericksburg to get me a wine barrel and I decided I was going to do something with it, and then I decided against that, and I wanted to do something else. Then I decided against that, and I decided I went to do with what I wound up doing. So, um, actually, I was going to go into explaining it, but I'm just going to explain it on the photo. So, uh, let's take a look at the Wine Barrel pro uh, Project. Okay, so here you have it. So this is already a work in progress. It's been quite a bit of work actually. So you can tell on the side there on the right hand side that I cut a door into the side of the barrel and before I did that the band at the uh, third band from the top and second band from the bottom I actually put in these uh, self drilling screws um, all the way around to make sure that when I cut into the barrel it didn't snap that band and the bands fell off. So that took quite a bit of work. Uh, which I did in season two. So uh, here's a shot of uh, after I stained it and I used actually I used just regular deck stain I was going to try to find something fa fancy but I figured this does the best for outdoors. So what I did here is I was taping it so that I can spray paint the bands a nice metallic silver to give it a, a nice finished polished look to it. Um, and so this was just done just the other day um, from the recording today. So once I did that, once I did the taping, then you see here, here's uh, the finished spraying of the door itself. So this is going to be the door um, and what I got picked up today, which is why I said it's 98% done, is I actually picked up uh, a hinge and uh, actually the bolts for the hinge and I have a door, not a door pull ready for it to go, which I will be installing today after our podcast. So then you'll probably see it next week. So um, I'm not going to put it out because it's going to be raining this week, but I wanted to get it ready to go. So here's a shot of the barrel itself. This is the um, top three uh, bands that have been taped and uh, spray painted. I used um, Rust-Oleum uh, indoor outdoor spray paint uh, metallic silver. So it turns out real nice. So I'll have some finished product, uh, uh, finished project for it when we go outside. Okay, so uh, there we have it. Um, the wine barrel project, and like I said in the voiceover, I'll be I'll be showing the finished product probably next week when I can pull it outside. This week is going to be nice and rainy, so I decided why not just wait another week until uh, you can bring it out into the elements because it's going to start degrading as soon as you have it out in the elements. As much as I've been covering and I put a couple of, you know, four or five layers of stain on there and I'm probably going to shellac it before I take it outside but even though I do all that preventative work you know once it gets out in the elements it's just going to start breaking down so uh, I'm going to see what I can do to keep it up uh, and running well. Plus, I still think I'm going to put some lights in there. Uh, I was shooting that over the idea over with uh, with the bro, and so I'm trying to think of how am I going to do that. Uh, hopefully, some either solar or battery powered lights, 
so that it can be on when uh, I have people outside. So, um, what else do I have going on? So, okay, so uh, for those of you who hopefully have watched, even though I know the ratings were low, and that's probably because it was having to do with a lot of people streaming the events, uh, the Olympics. So there are a lot of Olympic stuff going on. Uh, the curling's done. Oh, just about everything's done. Today, I believe, is the closing ceremonies for the event, if it hasn't already happened. Uh, I believe it might have because it is in China, and so I think the time difference is that they're already done. So, But hopefully there's a lot of... Um, a lot of uniqueness that you saw and a lot of things that you were interested in. I know I got to see some of my curling and I got to watch some of the sled and very little of the uh, figure skating, but I was able to pick up some of that from the uh, people posting it on Facebook. So uh, to talk about a little bit about the figure skating, because I did have some people on my Facebook page talk about um, the whole situation going on with the Russian skater so um, there's a lot of uh, I don't want to touch too much on the politics of it because I try to avoid politics on my show uh, however I will say I will talk about it a little bit because it has to do with the doping scandal that happened with the Russian figure skater so um, yes in my opinion a lot and not a lot of people are, are in agreement with me on this uh, that I've seen so far anyway. Um, if you are caught with your hand in the cookie jar, if you are caught doing drugs, if you are caught uh, doing Ill Ill what they consider illegal drugs, then you should be blocked or removed or um, disqualified for participating in whatever event you were supposed to participate in in the Olympics it only makes sense it's only fair because they're not uh, she wasn't taking this drug because it was gonna hinder her performance it was a performance enhancing drug that was listed for quite some time as illegal so and the story she gave I'm sorry I drank out of my grandfather's cup and he did that drug is just garbage. We all know it is. It was just something for her to try to save face on it. But to go even further back, uh, they're not even this young Russian skater and all Russian participants in the Olympics aren't even participating under the Russian flag because of all the doping scandals that have happened in the past. The IOC, the International Olympic Committee, has already banned these athletes from participating under the Russian flag so why are they even there now some people are saying well why should they get punished for what's been done before it's the Olympics it's supposed to you're supposed to be representing your country if your country gets disqualified <coughs> excuse me then you are part of that whether you are uh, whether you have done anything or not it doesn't matter if the IOC has banned your country so that you can't participate under that flag, then there should be th that should be it. So we shouldn't even be having this discussion about this Russian skater whether she should be able to skate or not. Which, by the way, even if she had won that night, do you know what happens? So what? From what I understand, from everything I read, if she won that night, this last night of her skating, all medals would be null and void under her as well so nobody would get a, a reward even if you were from another country you would not get that reward because she won first and it negates everything underneath that so how is that fair to people who aren't even part of russia uh part even they have nothing to do with the drugs and yet the ioc said it was okay for them to not even get a medal luckily for them she did she fell apart horrible skate wound up fourth so they were still able to have first, second, and third, and those people were able to hold on to, those ladies were able to hold on to those medals because she didn't place. But if she had placed, all of them, they would have lost all their medals. So how is, how is that fair to them? And yet it's okay for her to, to be able to skate still. That doesn't make any sense at all. If you get busted, you get disqualified. That's all there should be to it. That happens in, in sporting events across the world, everywhere, at every level. You cheat, 
you get disqualified, you don't get to participate. And yet, we still see this go on and on. Now, I understand there's political repercussions that the IOC has to worry about that I know nothing of. It's still, it's still shitty for all the other countries that aren't cheating. And if you haven't gotten caught, you will get caught. Now, some of the other arguments that I've heard was that, well, how come she still got to skate? And, uh, for example, the uh, young track star, I can't remember her name right now, but she was smoking a joint uh, because she was bereaved on uh, a passing of a family member. And so she smoked a joint to calm down, and that showed up in a blood test, and then she couldn't race. Well, again, these drugs have been listed for years. Marijuana was not a new drug on there. So she took an illegal drug, hence they consider that a form of cheating, hence they disqualified her. Now, she didn't get to race, and I agree with the person that was posting this morning saying, well, how come she didn't get to race, and she did. The only level part here is that if that Russian skater had actually uh, meddled, she shouldn't, uh, nobody else would get a, a medal. So I agree, she shouldn't have been able to skate at all. So the fact that they allowed her to skate is some smarmy, slimy stuff going on that we don't know about. We kind of know about, we, we infer that it's happening, but we don't know for a fact. But it's pretty sure that there's some sneaky, underhanded stuff going on because why did they allow her and not her? And there's others. And there's others that have gotten busted and they've been taking, their rights have been, their medals have been taken away after the fact. And they've been doing this after the fact. So I agree with the illegal illegality of what they are doing. However, I think they should not be allowed to participate at all, especially if something like that happened where anybody who was, who was legal and was trying to participate would have their medal taken away. So this, I hold the Olympics to a much higher bar than I hold other sports, but I still hold everyone to the bar of if you cheat or you get caught with an illegal drug, which is a type of cheating, then you should be disqualified, and that's all there is to it. So if anybody wants to fight me on that, be my guest. You can come on to my show, and we will discuss it ad infinitum and ad nauseum, and we will keep going with that. So, okay, so that's enough of the, uh, the bad part of the Olympics. But it's closed, so uh, another Olympics is pretty much come and gone. So now uh, I look forward to the Summer Olympics, which, by the way, if I am still doing my show, which I should be, then uh, I will have a, a knockdown, drag out, huge thing about the Olympics um, when I can, when they're out there. So, okay, and for uh, so uh, for those of you who who always ask, the opening song was called Friends instrumental uh again i don't know who um who composed it and who who played in it or anything like that but it was called friends instrumental again thanks to uh filmora wondershare for uh, wondershare filmora my editing software that comes with this because i am a subscriber and uh, thank you for that so um it is um some of the free music I can put on there without having to worry about YouTube blocking me on, on this and that and the other. So, okay. So, um, one more thing I wanted to talk about before we go into our uh, Zen moment was um, investments. So, I, over the past 10 years or so, invest here and there into things to uh, try to diversify my uh retirement income and try my best to see what I can do to to try to bolster it you know throughout the years I have left to work and before I have to retire uh, or before I'm forced to retire or before I just retire because I want to retire so um, I don't know what anybody may use out there but I know the market is fluctuating poorly um, or horribly or up and down however you want to call it um, but I try to find, uh, I have some normal investments, which I won't go into because I don't want people to know how bad I'm doing, but I do invest in some breweries and some other, uh, mom and pop type, uh, places. So for example, uh, I invested in a place called Honey Bee Burger Company, which is a vegan burger company out in uh, the uh, West Coast in California, specifically in Los Angeles and a couple of places around Los Angeles. They have four locations now. 
<coughs> excuse me. So if you are into um, vegan burgers and you live in the uh, L.A., they also have um, uh, vegan chicken sandwiches as well, which supposedly are really great. Um, then why not stop by, tell them Javier sent you, tell them Javier in the air sent you, and maybe they'll just give you a look and not a strange look because uh, they have no idea who I am. Um, so I've also invested, then going back to the East Coast, I invested in some places in Philadelphia, um, specifically Attic Brewing and Medford Brewing. In fact, I'll be getting my Attic Brewing uh, sweatshirt here um, any day now. And uh, Attic Brewing is a female-owned uh, brewery. They also have a um, uh, tap room so that you can go in and enjoy it. They also do delivery. They've been doing delivery since the... Um, COVID has started, and now they also have pickup for it. So uh, definitely check it out. Medford Brewing, I believe, is doing the same thing. Uh, I, I don't know if their tap room is open or not, but they do um, They do have some great brews. And I say great brews because I am a part of their teams. Um, I have yet to try any brew from Attic and or Medford. And if you guys want to ship me some down here in Cedar Park, Texas, by all means, please do. Or I will try to get a hold of some. So that I can have um, your beer on the show. Also would love to hear from you guys so that I can have you on the show as well. Now another company that I've um, been a, an investor of. Small investor. So by the way these are all small investments. So I'm not, I'm not um, by any means a rich person. But I, I, I took the time to invest in these companies because I, I saw something in them. So way across on the other side but still part of the, of the United States. Um, in Hawaii is a company called Ola Brewery. So I've been investing in them for quite a few years now. I love the group. I love the social media that they do. I love the, the posting that they do on Facebook. And they are a uh, cidery. They um, have a cider that is supposedly fantastic. They finally, well, well, they were just cider to begin with. And what they were doing was reclaiming uh, ugly or unused fruit from around the from around the island and islands and they were using that to make their cider from which I thought was a great idea waste not what not they were recycling the fruit that wasn't getting around anywhere and they said why not why can't we use it let's use it so they started using it which I thought was great and then they also started um, so the slowly they built their way up and then and this is still I think only a bit prior to COVID, because during COVID they 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 shrank a little, but then they were still able to hang on there, which I really great. I think that was great. Proud of them for that. The same with Attic and Medford. But um, so Ola started um, uh, constructing a tap room. So they didn't have a tap room, so they didn't have any anywhere for people to come and visit. But now they are close to the hotels, which then. They were able to tie, I believe they were able to tie it, I'm not sure, they can They can correct me if I'm wrong, please correct me. Um, and they started having uh, tourists coming by to go visit their tap room. So now their tap room is up and running, uh, good size now. Um, and then during uh, COVID, they were able to get a release of their um, cider and seltzer, I believe, into the continent of the United States so they were actually getting it out to um, uh, the LA area and which I thought was fantastic so I'm trying to still get a hold of Ola Brewery if you want to come on my show and I'll interview you um, and we'll talk about it I can get a hold I can try to get a hold of the cider or you can send me some or your seltzer and we'll definitely have it on the show and um, we'll give it a shot and see see what it is but they've done very well uh, they're kicking butt just like the other ones are now they're coming out of the, the the harsh covid we're still in covid but the harsh covid and i think we're doing they're doing a fantastic job so if anybody out, out um listening to my show and watching my show you know who you all are um you have a chance if you're in the philadelphia uh pennsylvania or pennsylvania area uh attic brewing medford brewing also, uh, Olo Brewing, if you're out in the Hawaii, in the May, this is, I believe, the Big Island. Uh, and again, they can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, go out there and say hello. Try their beer. Uh, these are small craft breweries and cideries that started up uh, just a few years ago. A uh, little bit of a struggle for all of them, 
because of COVID, but they, they are still going strong and I appreciate all the work they do. So I'm hoping that I can visit them here in the next year or so. And then that way I can have a, a live video from there, uh, talk to the brewer, the brew masters, the cider masters, and uh, you know just the people around there and see what they think about uh, the brewery itself and the cidery itself. So um, look into it, see if you can find some, let me know what you think. Um, okay, so now uh, let's go to a Zen moment and see what you think. Here you go, thanks. We fly to be free. Feel the wind beneath you and me as we spread our wings up and up into the sun-filled sea. High, so high up into the sky, sad and lonely thoughts fall like blocks, fall down, down, down and away to crash amongst the jagged rocks. We sail into the blue, here and there, through and through, fond memories lift us up of friends, of family, of me and of you. Sooner or later we know we must land and the earth once again gains hold. But we know we can and will fly again to be free and happy and bold. And there you have it, the Hawk Zen moment. Um, for those of you who may have recognized it, this was a repeat of it. But it was a beautiful day outside uh, today and yesterday. And um, though I didn't get out much yesterday, I did walk out to uh, move the trash around. And I did see um, the hawk up there that uh, lives in my neighborhood. But I, was, I didn't have my camera phone with me, so I wasn't able to uh, record it. But I thought it would be nice to put it out there again. Uh, it was quite a few months ago that I had this uh, in season two. So um, there it is again. But it was a new poem by Jay Anderson and it was a new music to go with it. Uh, the music was actually called Walk Into Thin Air, which was kind of appropriate since it's it was uh, showing a uh, flying hawk. So uh, there you go. Okay, so um, let's go into spirit time. Grab your beer, liquor, or wine. Because it's spirit time. Yeah, spirit time. Hey, hey, and so here we are. Spirit time. Let me readjust that light. I want to get that light just right for spirit time. But I'm not getting it where I want it. So let's see if this works. Ooh, that's much better. I might have to do that from now on. So, okay, so... um. It is time once again for us to try something new. Uh, this was brought to me, I believe this was brought to me by the bro. Um, he usually brings beer, but uh, he actually brought me something here. This is called Salvation. It's a 2016 Alexand 2016 Alexander Valley Late Harvest Zinfandel. So I was not going to break it open for me, but I decided that this was for the for the the podcast so normally i would save a zinfandel for um a party or for a tasting or for a brunch or for a get together of some sort i myself am not a huge fan of zinfandel but i thought i would do it for the show because we want to make sure that uh, everybody knows that i am multifaceted and multi-drinkable multi-drinker and we'll try just about anything that is brought to me. Just about. So, uh, there's the cork. As you see, it's it's uh, it's actually quite dark and more red than than the camera is picking up. So, okay, so here it is, Salvation Zinfandel. not a big it's not a big bottle here is the um, salvation and there you see late harvest Zinfandel okay so uh, I have it in my Becker Vineyards wine glass 
has a very um I don't know if you can see it but it's got some good legs on it legs meaning that it crawls crawls up the side of the glass so when you when you whisk it around like that and you see it remain on the side of the glass for a while as it as it slowly goes back down the glass that is called good legs the better it does that the supposed better the wine is so um, I myself um, go by what they say I, I don't necessarily know that's true but um, okay so um, it's a nice dark it's almost like a grape juice uh, uh, look to it which I'm kind of surprised at that I thought it'd be a little bit lighter but it's not um it's kind of smells like I know I know it's coming from grapes don't get me don't get me wrong I'm not an idiot but uh well I'm not a total idiot but this really has a grape juice type smell to it which I I'm fascinated by because normally the alcohol and the wine hits you first and then you have a smell of all the other notes that are inside the wine but for me this is truly just coming straight grape juice and then just maybe a little bit of alcohol in the back end I'm gonna let this air out a little bit more while we talk about it so I hope you're enjoying the new uh, opening that I have for um, this portion of the show that I now call spirit time thanks to Ma for the uh, name suggestion um, and if you can't tell that is me singing the opening for spirit time back there uh, I'm trying something different a little a little every time because I haven't found one yet that I really love that I will then make as part of the um, opening section itself. So then that makes it totally um, what we'll, we'll, we'll have all the time. So if anybody wants to uh, comment or suggest or even send me something that will go with Javier in the Air Presents Spirit Time, um, I will get it on the show. So, and if everybody likes it, I will keep it on the show, and then I will give you credit for it uh, from now on and every time I use it. So, uh, um, you know, uh, it'll be free, of course. I'm not paying anybody to do it, but if you want to get on the show in that way, you certainly can. So, um, by the way, also, if you want to come on the show with a particular alcohol, beer, or wine that you want to present that you really love and you want to get it on the show, by all means, let me know. I'll let you in, and we can certainly sit down, uh, keep in our COVID safe distance, of course, if necessary, um, and we can talk about whatever it is. And so um, I noticed that some of the more harsher COVID restrictions have fallen, even though here in Texas, uh, well, we won't go into that because I don't talk about politics, but I've seen that some of the restrictions are lowered, so I'll be able to get out and about more um, so we can start trying different locations along with the alcohol that they have. So here is the uh, Salvation 2016 Zinfandel. Yes, now I let it air out a few minutes, not much, but I'm really beginning to get that alcohol smell now. So for those of you who may not be wine connoisseurs, uh, definitely not sommeliers like, like the rest of us are not, then you can certainly try... Uh, you will notice different notes of a wine as you let it what we call aerate. In other words, let it be out into the open, exposed to oxygen and nitrogen and all the other uh, elements that are a part of what we call air. So hence aerate. Um, so you, when you open up a bottle, either smell it straight from the bottle or smell it your first glass that you pour. And then as you drink it, try smelling it uh, every couple of minutes and see if you get additional notes which I know you will because that's how most wine works so definitely getting some more uh, like I said the alcohol smell to it so let's give it a taste I'm gonna give one more taste before I actually give it any thoughts a any actual word verbal thoughts to this This is definitely, to me, a dessert wine. This is something that would go well with, say, uh, straight-up cheesecake, maybe no fruit on the cheesecake. Uh, some flan uh, would go well with this, something that doesn't have a lot of um, uh, fruitiness to it. This is what you would have along with it. You could even maybe even pour it over some uh, ice cream or pour it over some angel food cake and eat it that way. Uh, it is really sweet, and... and 
everybody knows that I am a sweet, uh, have a huge sweet tooth. And if I'm saying this is sweet, definitely if you're not a fan of sweetness, you are not going to like this. So let me look more into the uh, bottle itself and see if I can get anything out here. Um, early in the morning on October 1st, 2016, we harvested Zinfandel from block SVWW, a single tiny vineyard for this dessert wine. So it is a dessert wine. Um, the low yielding old vines struggle on the site and the clusters have concentrated complex and well-balanced flavors. This dark rich late harvest Zinfandel has intense aromas of blackberry jam blackberry jam I'm sorry blackberry not blackberry jam blackberry jam um, where was I spice and raspberry they are intriguing there are intriguing flavors of chocolate candied cherry I do taste the candy cherry uh, molasses which I don't taste uh, strong spice and blueberry the finish is long and filled with flavors of chocolate covered cherries I'm gonna have to try it again and see um, this is 9.3 Oh, that's residual sugar. So it is a lot of sugar. Produced and bottled by the Alexander Valley Vineyards, Haroldsburg, Sonoma, Sonoma County, California. Um, alcohol is 15.4 by volume. So the ABV is 15.4, so it's really high, which I like, and you know the bro likes. But it is so sweet, I would not be able to drink, like, say, 12 ounces of it like I would uh, a beer can. So, I'm definitely not going to get the same, you know, effect as far as the ABV goes. It'll be much lower impact on me because of this. I'm sorry, but I'm getting very little of the, of a true wine taste too. I'm getting more of this dessert, not even dessert wine, just dessert. This is something that like I said I could make a sauce with it I could make a fruit I mean a topping with it you throw in some blueberries or some cherries uh, reduce it make a reduction of it <coughs> so that it becomes a sauce and then you could pour it over the cheesecake or even on the flan that I was talking about maybe not on the flan but on the cheesecake for sure um, so while I like this uh, I believe the sugar content for me is just really too high to make this a um, be able to finish a whole glass of it unless like I said I mixed it in with something else I could really see making a reduction using a reduction making a reduction with this adding it to some angel fruit cake I, food cake I think that would make it really nice um, so dessert wines I don't think I've had a dessert wine on here so as far as dessert wines go I'm gonna give this a six it's not bad uh, it tastes good it's just really sweet and um, like I said, uh, I used to be heavily into the sweet, but even this for me is, is quite a bit. So um, I'm going to give it six thumbs up. And uh, anybody out there at the uh, Alexander Valley uh, wants to refute my um, judging of this, by all means, certainly just um, come out and either bring me another bottle maybe not a 2016 maybe 2017 is is less sweet maybe 2015 is less sweet uh or another year that's even better bring it out we'll sit down we'll talk about it uh heck you can bring your sommelier if you want you can bring your wine master and uh i'll get you on the show and we'll talk about it so uh there you go salvation uh zinfandel uh, dessert wine 2016 and there you have it folks uh, that is our time for today thank you for watching Javier in the Air season 3 episode 7 coming at you um, I hope you appreciated uh, anything and everything I did uh, if you have any comments or concerns or thoughts or suggestions or anything drop me a line if you know my email address if you know me on Facebook drop me a direct message if you know me on here on YouTube Javier in the air you can certainly comment on this or any of the other episodes that I have out there and I have all three seasons so if you want to go back and question anything about 
any of the other shows I have or you have comments about any of the other episodes, by all means, leave a comment on there. I will get notified and I will talk about it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you enjoyed um, having the day off if you did. If it's President's, it is President's Day. So I hope you may have off there. And uh, on this day, I hope you remember the president that you like the most. Uh, I wish I would have gotten some sound bites. I forgot to see uh, whose people, people's thoughts are on presidents, specifically older presidents, on who they thought um, their favorite president was. So enjoy the rest of the week. If you have any questions or concerns, if you know of any mom and pop places around Cedar Park area or even around the country, by all means, reach out to me. Let me know. And if they're interested, uh, they can reach out to me and we can have a interview, Zoom or in person, up to them uh, so they can show me their, their store and their wares. And we can talk about their business, um, see if we can drum up a little business for them. Uh, so uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks again to... Um, to the um, the different breweries that I mentioned today, Medford and Attic and Ola. And by the way, I also forgot another one that I that I talk about a lot that I have a small little piece of, very small, like minuscule grain of sand small. Uh, and that is Saucy Brew Works out of Ohio. They have three or four locations now. Uh, I need to get to see them as well. They supposedly have a fantastic fantastic pizza and i'll be looking forward to that hopefully uh, sometime this year so thanks a lot i'll see everybody again next week